And stay with us, there's still plenty to come in Spotlight tonight. Join me as I learn to sail as a crew member on board a yacht from Dartmouth, which is competing in this year's Fastnet race. And Big Ben rings the changes in a bid to turn professional. Now, this weekend, hundreds of yachts will set off from the Isle of Wight for the fast net rock off Ireland before heading back to Plymouth. Well, Spotlight's Johnny Rutherford will be on board one of the yachts, and in the second part of his series on the build up to the race, he's been learning the ropes. Three, two, one, and gun! To be able to take part in the Fastnet, your yacht and 50% of your crew need to compete in three qualifying races. It shows the boat and crew are up for what can be a tough challenge. That includes me and my BBC camera kit. But it's fairly difficult if you're going to be living in a confined space with, in our case, with 10 people on a very um, confined space for five days. It's a long race, it's 608 miles and that you can get some pretty awful conditions even in August. It's nice to do the big one because it's one of the world's best known races. One of our qualifying seals is the St Malo race, a 200 yacht armada which sets off from cars. It's quite frightening when you see some of these professionally driven boats uh, to see just what we're up against but there's plenty of room for amateurs. I'm a passionate believer in sailing being a sport for everyone. There's an enormous number of variables in, in sailing a racing yacht and trying to sail it fast, trying to get that ex extra point one of a knot out of the boat which on a, on a four day, five day race, which the fast net is, um, if, if you get an extra point one of a knot can make many hours difference over that period. OK, Johnny, you're starting to get in the groove, I can see. You've Sailing a yacht to perfection takes real skill. Come up towards yeah, me a little yeah. bit. That's good. And until you get the telltale streaming and we're making the best speed there. That's good. You're getting in it. It's not actually as easy as it looks. For a novice, it's actually quite difficult. But well, I'm uh, getting you'll, there. You'll be, you'll be there soon, don't worry. But first we had to cross one of the busiest shipping lanes in the world, in the dark. We have a 3R on, 3R off watch system, which in the rain and wind can be quite taxing, even for my infrared camera. That's how it's working, man. It's a bit of concentration. Well, it's pouring with rain, it's pitch black, it's almost midnight, but we are doing 10 knots and we've just passed a yacht. And everybody's still very keen to go on and do well in this race. Personally, I think they're all mad. Initially I thought maybe yachting was a certain generation, but actually it's been it's pretty hardcore. We've had some massive winds, sort of up to 30 knots of wind. When you're sailing at night, it's dark, the waves are like crashing around you. We've had some pretty big waves actually. It's definitely an adventure for sure. But the real adventure starts this Sunday when the fleet of 300 yachts sets sail in the Rolex 2007 Fastnet race. Johnny Rutherford, BBC Spotlight, St Malo, France. Well, there are some concerns about the weather forecast for next week. David's here with us now. What are the early indications? Well, the start of the race should be no problem at all. It should be a good start. But the chart behind me is the one that's illustrating what could happen on Tuesday. And as you can see, there's quite a deep area of low pressure. And of course, it brings back memories of the 1979 Fastnet. So it's a bit worrying when you see a chart with a deep low and that many isobars on it. David, we all know how, how much the weather can change from day to day though. How certain are you at the moment? Because you do follow various scenarios, very, various models, don't you? Well, the Met Office have now issued us an early warning of the potential for severe weather, so they're quite confident on that. And of course, I, I'm able to look at other models, the American models, the European models, and they all seem to be steering towards this solution. So I think it, it's going to happen. It's just a question of how deep and how low. Okay, we'll get the uh, weekend forecast from you later. Thanks very much for now.